Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Frank from Tested. We're here at Maker Faire 2017. And got in before the doors opened. Yes. We got crazy and we're drawn to this booth. These are 3D printed car engines. It's amazing and they're designed by yeah. this gentleman here, Eric. How are you doing? Good. Uh, Eric, tell us how this project got started, how long you've been making this and your whole process of making these engines. Well, about three years ago I was rebuilding a Toyota engine in my garage and you know, I had a 3D printer and the only thing available was only like trinkets and knickknacks online for people to download. And I figured, hey, I can model this up in the computer and, you know, make it printable and make it, you know, moving and running and share it with everybody so they can have something to download and, and see how an engine works on the inside and, you know, transition from like 3D printing to like automotive and mechanical. So it's kind of like a cool version of those uh, model kits you used yeah. to be able to get that were like clear Super engines. V8, yeah. yeah, I always wanted one as a kid and that was my, one of the inspirations too. Was, you know, I can just make my own. So you have a bunch of different kinds of engines. Like, is there like a rhyme or reason which? Well, I had the Toyota engine in my garage and I was rebuilding that. And then my friend had a Subaru uh, WRX engine just laying around. So I, I took that and reverse engineered it. And then the newer ones were done from some CAD files and drawings. And then the most recent one was done by just specs and pictures. Um, and that was, that was the challenging part was doing it from just specs and pictures, um, having no dimensions or anything. We chat with people who make replica you know, items all the time, whether they're movie props or mechanical things, but an engine is a very, fairly complex piece of machinery. It, what's your design process? Like your reference you said is from real engines to schematics, but how do you start designing this? It's not just SketchUp, is it? Just, I just jump into it and it, it, I visualize it in my head. I can see some of the moving parts and I can put that in the computer and it, it just, I don't know how to explain it that, that well, but it's just how I work. And Is there a part that you start with, like like the camshaft or? I start with the engine block, Yeah. and then I can, from specs and um, dimensions, I can start with the, the stroke and the bore, uh, and, and then design that from there, start for, do the crankshaft and then the pistons and connecting the rods, and then I build, work my way out. And then as building in the computer, it allows me to do the whole assembly piece by piece, and then have a full, almost full functioning model in the computer. How much of this are each engine's 3D printed parts versus hardware? And I see some other hardware that you have to bring in. It's it maybe like two or three percent hardware. Um, it's just metric fasteners and springs and bearings, um, but it's mostly printed. So. And tolerances look like they have to be pretty tight. Um, they, the first ones were pretty tight, um, but I designed all my parts to be printed on just the cheapest printer I can find, so anybody can print it. You know, anybody can download the files and print their own. So the, the tolerances are loose where they can be, and they're tight where they need to be. So there's like some people need to do finishing work and stuff, but I've, I've learned through the process that what I can design tolerance-wise to make things easier for uh, people to print on their own. You're gonna try honing out the cylinders and putting a, a ring in the piston? I've thought about doing more like, uh, you know, sleeving the piston and maybe doing a, like a methanol engine or something, yeah. but that's more, more work and more time. So. You could probably get a, a low temperature. I've been trying to research burning, like the yeah. lowest burning fuel, but yeah. anything is gonna burn, and then you gotta print in nylon and all that stuff. And that's one more project to one more can of worms to open up that I'm not sure if I want to tackle. So these engines all run off a motor on the outside that mm -hmm. actually run them. Um, what's that system? And and it looks like you have a dial here to adjust speed as well. Yeah, just a small uh, geared DC motor hooked up to a pulse with a modulation uh, controller to a 12 volt power supply. It allows you to just turn it down and up, so you can see. You can slow down. You can see the valves actually moving and in sync with the the pistons. Are you, are you also modeling the pathways for the coolant to flow nope. through? No. No pathways. For oh coolant come on. No jackets. It's just <laughs> I, I can, but it's it's more time, you know. And then the, when you get into the coolant jackets and the oil passages, and you're making thinner walls that some theater repairs can't print, and they'll just end up with gaps. Then in you the can walls. make it clear, and then you could put coolant through it. Yeah. And... <laughs> yeah. The the. I mean, the possibilities are endless. You can just take it wherever you want to go. Oh, I think it's cool, though. Yeah. And, and you're designing these, looks like a lot of these are just FDM prints. Are you also experimenting with different types you know, of... Yeah, I mean, some companies have taken, like, the Subaru engine and they printed it on polyjets and stuff, and that's, like, really... They print it on polyjets to, like, where it's, like, it just looks like a clear acrylic piece and you can see everything moving. Um, but, yeah, I don't have access to those printers, so... But some people have tried it. 
Now, the transmissions that you have, like transmissions are, in my brain, like a complicated yeah, setting. Yeah, and that's like, one reason why I kept doing it, because I can't explain how a transmission works to somebody. Like, you just can't like verbally, verbally explain it. Yeah. It's impossible. So if you download the files and you assemble your, your own, you will know exactly how it works. How the, get, the gears and the cogs move and lock and everything, it, it'll make sense. Now, have you gotten into an automatic transmission yet? Uh, I want to, but it's, it's hard because there's planetary gear sets, and you can do it, but then you wouldn't be able to see the planetary gear sets. Clear. And you wouldn't be able to see uh, like the clutch packs moving. Yeah. So, and I can't print and clear to where it's you know visible. You gotcha. Know. Yeah. I want to. It's just. And these, because they're just digital files, you can print them at any any scale. Is there a scale you like, or what's the top? I started at about third scale because that was what my printer could hold, and then that it just worked out that was a good scale. So I kept going. Everything is third. It's about third scale. It's thirty five percent of the reel. Um, so what, what's the out. smallest you've gotten an engine to to work and print? Uh, I haven't scaled it down below thirty five percent because that's where my bearings are. I size them for the bearings, and you know, I, people have printed them smaller but they have gone out and sourced their own bearings and modified the files. Now, do you think you could take a classic engine like this mm -hmm. and maybe do a, like a lost wax kind I of casting? I thought about that too. You could lost PLA cast, yeah. um, but you know, one more project and one more thing to... Yeah, but to recreate a classic engine that they don't make those engine blocks for anymore. Yeah. And like this, I mean, this would be the perfect one, the flathead, because the core is in it. It would be perfect candidate for lost wax, but um, yeah, it's just... One more thing. If anybody wants to do it, I'll, the, the <laughs> files will be uploaded, and they can, you know, they can tackle that on their own. Awesome. Well, thank you so much here for sharing with us your 3D printed engine designs. And like you said, these are all available online yes, in Thingiverse. Most of them are on Thingiverse. Um, the newer ones aren't online yet, but they will be eventually. And what's next for you? Going on three years, what's the next challenge? Are you, you going to keep on making more engines and transmissions? I'm trying to find something more complicated. Get um, a rotary engine. Rotary is next. Yeah. Yes. Rotary, like a, a, a two rotor engine is next. Rotary engine is next. Um, but I'm trying to find more complicated things to, to model and print. So engines are. You know, so far the most complex thing, engines and transmissions. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. It's nice to meet yeah, you. Thanks. Thank you.